Okay, so we're nearly through in our derivation of the characteristic function for a normal random variable. And in the last video, we derived this result at the top. And we sort of spoke about how we need to evaluate this integral, which we have in the result. And I spoke about the way in which we're going to do that is we're going to actually evaluate this via a complex contour integral, which is a rectangular complex contour integral. And first of all, before we sort of consider infinity, we're going to actually consider a sort of finite number to begin with and then we're going to let this finite number go to infinity so that we actually get the result we wanted for this particular integral. So we're going to start off in terms of defining our integral in terms of this amount alpha which we're then going to let go to infinity and this sort of contour sort of the first part of the contour goes along the real axis the second part is sort of perpendicular to it, so it's just sort of running in the imaginary direction, and it goes up until the imaginary component is actually equal to um, minus it. And then we just integrate the sort of third part of this integral, and it actually turns out that as alpha goes to infinity, this third part of the integral is actually going to represent the integral which we're interested in finding. So that's kind of the logic for why we're doing what we're doing. So let's first of all think about what the evaluation of our function e to the minus s squared over 2 integrated around this closed contour is actually going to be. Well, I actually already sort of said at the end of the last video that our sort of closed contour integral of e to the minus s squared over 2 is actually going to be equal to 0 because this function e to the minus s squared over 2 is actually analytic for all points around which we're integrating for so for all sort of values of um, the imaginary part of s and the real part of s in this particular surface our e to the minus s squared over 2 can actually be expanded as a power series there are no singular points within this particular region and this is a result of sort of complex analysis and if you don't really know that then um, i suspect it's probably best your time is probably best spent going and sort of looking through some sort of introductory text on complex analysis. Okay, so the way in which we can evaluate this particular contour integral is by thinking about each of the integrals in turn. So the first component is actually going to be equal to the integral, well, we're starting off at alpha, and then we're going to minus alpha. And because we're just integrating along the real axis, our s has no imaginary component, so it's just e to the minus x squared over 2 dx, because x is just a real number. Okay, so that's the first part of the integral. That was easy enough. The second part of the integral, so this point here, we're starting off at minus alpha, and we're going to minus alpha minus it. But now our s has both real and imaginary components. In other words, it's complex, so we're going to have e to the minus x squared over 2 ds. Then the third part of this integral is just going to be the sort of integral we're interested in, which is we're starting off at minus alpha minus it, and we're going to up here, we're going to alpha minus it. And again, we're integrating the same function, so that's just e to the minus s squared over 2 ds. And then the final part of this particular integral is just going to be the fourth part, and that's just going to be the integral. We're starting off here at sort of alpha minus it, and we're ending up at just alpha where we began in the first place. And again, our s has both real and imaginary comp components, so we need to write e to the minus s squared over 2 ds. And we know that this entire integral has to evaluate to zero, so that's our sort of starting point. And then what I want to do is I want to think about what happens to each of these components in the limit that alpha goes to infinity. Well, let's think about this sort of first part of the integral. If instead of having alpha and minus alpha, I had infinity and minus infinity, then that looks very, very similar to something we already know. It's the integral of a normal probability density function. Um, although it hasn't been standardized. So actually this integral here is going to evaluate to something like, and um, we can just replace it by minus root 2 pi. And it's minus because I'm integrating in the opposite direction to which we normally integrate. Okay, cool. So that's 
that part of the integral done. Now I want to think about parts two and parts four. Well, if you think about both parts two and parts four, then they both, this sort of S is actually going to contain alpha. So when I sort of square S, I'm going to get alpha squared. Or, and then when I put a minus in front of that, I'm actually going to get e to the minus alpha squared. And because alpha is infinite, that means that essentially e to the minus alpha squared is going to be zero. So actually this second part and this fourth part are both going to evaluate to zero. And then so we're just finally left with this component which we're actually interested in here. And we can actually evaluate that we can sort of, we've only got that left and the minus root two pi left. So we know that actually this integral, which we're interested in here, so the one at the top, is just actually equal to, we can just replace it with root two pi. And we got that just from the fact that we could just take this minus root two pi over to the other side of our sort of equality sign here. And then when we do that, we're actually going to have a cancelling between the two root two pi's and we get what we set out to prove, namely that the characteristic function of our standard normal random variable is equal to e to the minus t squared over 2.